Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now this is a continuation of the various engine component inspections on the RAV4 and it's episode 30, pretty sure it is. And on this particular short video we're going to inspect, I'm going to show you how to inspect conrods for bend and twist. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? Okay, so a conrod, which is what this is, connects the piston to the crankshaft and it converts the linear motion of the piston to a rotational motion of the crankshaft, or vice versa, it works both ways. Now, in order to check this properly, we need to first remove the piston. And on this particular RAV4, it's quite easy. It's like a motorcycle one, really. You've got like a little, well, here's one I prepared earlier, a little circlip. It's in the end of the pin there, look, piston pin. There's one on each side. You've only got to take one out, and if you take it out, you need to use a new one, okay? Uh, take it out, and then you just either press out or punch out, with the correct size punch, uh, the piston pin. And that will then separate the piston off the conrod. Now, on these particular ones, the piston pin, just like on motorcycles normally, it's, it's not that tight a fit, you know, you can actually move it around and take it out without too much hassle. It's, it's a good snug fit, but it's not an interference fit, so to speak. Get it back in the centre. There we go. Okay. That'll do. Right. So once you've got your conrod stripped off the piston, we can now test it. Now, there's a number of different ways of testing it. And first of all, I'm going to show you how to test it using a really old... Cervex piece of kit. Now this is just part of the equipment, but Cervex, this is whew, this is really old stuff, but it does work. There is another way, but we'll do it this way first, and then you'll get an idea of what we're trying to do, and then I'll show you a different way, a way that you can probably do this at home without any specialist equipment, other than a set of feeler gauges. Hey, and a flat surface, obviously. A very, very flat surface. Okay, here we go. Okay, so on this old cervix equipment for testing conrod twist and bend, it has a machined flat surface, and it also has this semicircular sort of outrigger. And these two surfaces, well, they really have to be at 90 degrees, otherwise the whole thing won't work, and we can test that with a square. And, yep, that's bang on 90 degrees, which is what I was hoping, because if it's not, then it's scrap. And the conrod basically fits on there like that. Now, I've made up a little spacer just to hold it so I can clamp it onto there. And the idea of that, it's going to square it up onto that in that orientation, like that. And it's also going to square it in that orientation. So we're going to just drop that in there. We've got a machined surface in there, and we've got a machined surface on here. So once there's a little bit of pressure on that, it should hold it in position. Now, um, the distance, yeah, that's about right. Okay, we'll just clamp that up. Obviously, this machine works for lots of different size conrods. You know? We've just got a little bit of pressure on those. Not much, because I don't want to obviously deform the cap. But it does need to hold it securely. Okay, it's probably about 10, 15 newton meters on those pins. Maybe not even that. Okay, now this is the part which drops onto the actual piston pin here, the gudgeon pin. And that sits on there like that. And if the conrod was twisted so that this no longer is parallel to the big end, so it's twisted across like that, use, use a spanner, just to, to show you what I mean, if it was twisted across like that, then when we fit this on with these two pins, we would get a gap between the pointers that go onto the machine surface. And if the conrod is bent, turning this around, then we'll get a gap between one of these two. And that's pretty good. Okay, so I'll move the camera, I'll do the test, and you can see, well, what we get. Okay. So you've seen the conrod now mounted on that semicircle at the bottom. 
and we've got the piston pin here. Now ideally, what we're checking for is to make sure that that piston pin is perpendicular to, at 90 degrees to, this engineering engineer's flat plate. Okay, so the first job, we can do that by dropping the, the two little V-blocks that are built into this casting onto there, and then sliding up the unit so that the pins touch the engineer's plate. Now ideally both pins should touch together and there should be no gap. But just to check we're going to use a feeler gauge because it is a little bit difficult to see. So we'll find a really small thin feeler gauge which is on here somewhere. Okay so I've got a 0 0.051 oh no we've got a smaller one here we go we've got a 0 0.038 feeler gauge that's millimeters by the way so 0 0.038 millimeters. I just want to see if that's going to pass. Oh, it's damaged. Damn. Okay, see if that's going to pass behind either of those two pins. Okay, not that one. And not that one. Okay, so this conrod is not bent. But we still need to check to see if it's twisted or not. So it's not bent. There we go. Look, feeler gauge won't go through. And I'm not, I'm not really holding that. I'm not pushing it against it. It's just resting against that engineer's face and both of those two pins are touching simultaneously, which is great. If there was a gap, then of course it would indicate that the conrod was bent, uh, and then we'd have to do maybe do some different measurements to, to match it to spec, because the specs that were given, you know, the, the, the bend is obviously accentuated by this particular tool, and the specs we get wouldn't apply to this particular way of measuring. Now, for conrod twist, all we do is turn the, uh, the device around and again offer it up to the flat surface and again we can do exactly the same check because it's quite difficult to see with a feeler gauge and we can just see if that feeler gauge is going to go through in there okay well that one just went in there actually didn't it okay that one isn't going in so we have we do have a very very tiny I'll just give that a wiggle Ah, oh, no, no, there you go. Okay, so that's good. So that tells us that there's no twist on the conrod. It tells us that the gudgeon pin is parallel to the big end uh, journal. That's really important. Now, you don't have one of these, and you probably haven't got one of these special conrod checking machines. Um, it's just a big lump of iron, really, isn't it? But what you might well have is a flat plate. And probably the easiest and cheapest kind of flat plate is a piece of glass. Obviously a reasonable thick piece of glass because glass can flex. But a piece of glass, flat glass, is usually pretty flat. Um, or you're going to have to get hold of some kind of engineer's flat plate. And I'll show you how to measure a conrod just using a flat plate, standard flat plate, and some feeler gauges. Now to do this, this time round, just using a flat plate, you need to strip the conrod right down. Take off the end cap, but do mark which way around it goes. That's really important. And, of course, remove the gudgeon pin. We don't need that anymore. So it's just the bare conrod. Okay. Now, you're going to see in the next shot that I'm using the same piece of kit, but I'm just using the flat surface. The bit that was vertical before, that engineer's flat plate, I'm only using that as a flat plate. So a normal engineer's flat plate will do exactly the same thing. So, first of all, get your conrod and just lay it on the actual engineer's flat plate. Now, this doesn't work if you've got an offset conrod, which means that the centre line of the um, gudgeon pin bearing, the small end, isn't in the centre line of the, main, of the big end here. Um, but for a normal conrod, most of them are centre lined, and you can just lay it on there, and basically just try and rock the conrod from side to side. Now you can clamp one end down, that's another way of doing it. And you can get that feeler gauge, that really thin feeler gauge that you had. What did we have? 0 0.38. There we go. And you can just... Hopefully yours won't be as bad as mine. It's had a hard life. Just to say... Just see if you can snick that under any of 
the points where it contacts the flat plate. Now if you can, that's an indication again that something is bent or twisted. Okay. If the corner rod was bent, then we'd be able to probably, if it was bent upwards for example, you could get that under there. And if it was bent downwards in its current orientation, you'd be able to get the feeler gauge under there. Okay, and that all looks pretty good. Then we can turn it over, do exactly the same thing again as a double check. That's good. Okay, let me show you one that's not good. Okay, so here's another conrod that came from somewhere else. It's actually made of aluminium. And no, I can't quite make out the manufacturer symbol. But if we place that on the flat surface, first of all, it doesn't want to sit very flat. It just rattles around, which is an immediate indication that there's some kind of defect. Okay, so we'll leave it in that orientation for now. Oh, look at that. Definitely not right. And that's a machine surface here, so that should be dead flat. Okay, so we'll get a feeler gauge. This one's actually a 0.1 millimeter feeler gauge. It's much thicker than the previous one. And we can just go around, and straight away we've got gaps all the way around there. And the contact point is around this side where the feeler gauge won't go under. And again, on this side, we've got huge gaps and the contact point somewhere in the middle. Well, it's just, it's just, there's so much movement that it's all over the place. But yeah, you know, even holding it still, we've got movement, we've got clearance under there, clearance under this side. If we turn it over, okay, it doesn't rock around quite so much. Let's see what we've got. So again, we've got clearance all the way under there, all under there, and the contact point is right down there. Now it should be touching all the way around there, and it's not. And at this end, yeah, okay, we've got a gap there, quite a big gap, and now the contact point is at the ends. There we go. Okay, and another way to do it is with a torch. Okay, so first of all, forgive me if I dazzle you a little bit, but if you get your torch, and put it behind the conrod and then quite clearly we can see light we can see a gap between the conrod and the flat surface and you can see it's just touching right at the base all the way along obviously there's a gap there and you get to this end and again you can see another gap and if we flick it over the gaps are going to change so now the gap is at the top end. See that there, look, there's the gap. We go down here, and now it's touching there at the top of the big end, and then we've got gaps down the bottom. Okay. So that's three different methods of how to check a conrod for twist and bend. And, and let's face it, it's pretty important it isn't twisted or bent, because if it is, it's going to put pressure on the side of the piston, or the piston's going to be sat in the bore at an angle, you know, and it's going to be scraping here and scraping down here, and it, it's just not good. Um, or one side of the piston, the whole side's going to be buffing against the, the cylinder wall, and there's going to be lots of clearance on the other side. And uh, either way, it's, it's bad news, isn't it? So you do, if you suspect that there is a bent conrod, or you, know, you want to do a proper engine check, then whip the pistons off and find a flat plate and just check them. It's not hard to do and you know it's best to do now than later on if you've got problems with your bores and uh, you know get them checked. And all you need is a flat plate and having an engineer's flat plate is a really useful thing to have around the workshop anyway. It can be used for all sorts of accurate measurements. Also quite handy for uh, you putting some emery cloth on there you know, with emery cloth facing upwards and you can flat things off on it. It's really cool. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of this video. Yes, it's not a super short video. It's not really a bite-sized chunk because I did a few different methods. Um, but I hope you found it helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, then do leave them down at the bottom. I'm all ears. I do like to, uh, to learn more stuff. And there's plenty of other people out there that watch these videos that know a lot more about engines than I do. I tend to do lots of stuff. 
pretty good at most things, but I'm not excellent at certain things. None of us are. Um, okay, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then do so. Click subscribe and join the gang. Um, if you'd also like to click on the little gear icon, turn on notifications, and then whenever I upload a video to the channel, you'll get a notification to say, hey, Andy McCallick's got a new video on his YouTube channel. Why don't you watch it? Because it might be of interest to you. Okay, well, you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Cheers, over and out.